Hello. This is the first time that I've ever spoken about one particular aspect of my life, which happened in 2002, which is quite a while now. Um, I've not spoken, some people know about it, but a lot of people don't. But years ago, I was an alcoholic, believe it or not. Um, how it happened, I can't really say, but I think from when I left school, um, the seeds were starting to be sown there when I went drinking out with my friends. But that was more a social aspect of it. And that probably wasn't a particular problem at the time. <clears throat> and as time went on, I used to go out drinking with some people who I knew as I got older, um, did the usual binge drinking, etc. But I wasn't really using it as a way to deal with my problems until some years later. And it became quite a big part of my life, in a way. Um, what used to happen was, any time I had a problem in my life, I used to drink. <coughs> so I was self-medicating. Any failures, anything went wrong. If I was feeling depressed, I would go out and get drunk. And then, one year, I had a job. I walked out, I left it because I'd had enough. And that was probably the, the thing that pushed me over the edge. I just um, drank to excess. I used to sit on park benches, not far away from where I live. Um, in fact, I could probably tell you every off license, even now, where they were. There used to be one not far away from the park bench where I used to sit on. I had them all mapped out in my mind, so it was very easy for me to get alcohol. You know, it was within reach. Walking distance, I didn't have to walk very far at all. So I'm just in the camera. Sorry about that. <coughs> and now I'm not going to edit it. I was within walking distance. You know, we're talking yards. If there was a, I don't know, say 400, 500 yards, and there was somewhere to get alcohol, then I'd be there. Whether it be, you know, I used to sit on park benches, everywhere I used to go. When I was looking for a job, I used to go to Nottingham, which is my uh, major town centre, well, city centre, you know, big city centre. I used to go there. I'd be on the bus, I'd come back from a place which was um, to do with looking for jobs, looking for work, I'd be drunk on the bus, I'd come home, um, I'd go to a local park, Highfields, which you may have seen in some of my vlogs, I'd go <coughs> sit there, get drunk, I, I was drunk all the time, in fact, it got to a point where it started affecting my liver, I was in the process of cirrhosis, which means that, you know, your liver is starting to shut down, it's stopping to work. I felt so ill, it caught up with me eventually. I felt, when I stopped, I went through the DTs on me, and I don't know if you know what that is. It's when you start shaking and you're sweating and your heartbeat goes faster and your palpitation, palpitations and all sorts. I went through all that on my own, which was scary. I've never felt so scared in all my life. It's one of the worst things I could ever happen to me in my life, going through that. And I was ill for years. I mean ill. Some people, it doesn't affect them that much, but it did me. There was days when I just, I couldn't do anything. It, for me, walking from one room to, to my bedroom is not next to nothing. But just doing that, coming in here, with me, you know, where the computer is, that was a huge effort for me. But that's all my army now. 
And the moral of the story is you can change your life. I'm still here. Um, I mean, the thing, this is probably a bit of a sad thing, but um, people do overcome these things, you know, and they do live. There's been many uh, famous alcoholics, like I think I was Keith Chegg when he's still alive, and I am, thankfully. And I'm glad I am because um, my life started to change. So, for the better, really. I mean, it's just been circumstances and the way I used to think about things that have all seeded this habit when I used to have it. And do I want to drink now? Well, there's been times when I've been tempted, yeah, but um, I don't go back there because I know if I do, it'll just become a focus. I'll be back there again. Then I'll ruin my life. It does ruin your life. I mean, somebody I know wasn't so lucky and he's not here to tell the tale, fortunately. And I knew that at the time, but for whatever reason, I just, I don't know, I just stayed out of it. So the moral of the story is, if you know anybody or if you're going through any kind of problem like that, talk to people, tell them, because I didn't. I kept it all to myself. Nobody knew. And it is actually part of the healing process, I think, when you actually tell somebody. So I hope you can take something away from this. Um, the reason I did this was because um, somebody else on Google Plus, Michael Chase namely, did um, a video about, I never went to therapy. I mean, that's one thing I never did. I never went to therapy. I just managed it on my own somehow. I don't know how. Don't ask me how because I just don't know. Something kept me going. But um, I didn't go to Alcoholics Anonymous or have any therapy. Um, but now I'm trying to make changes to my life. So I'm more happier, more focused, more positive. And uh, I don't intend going back there again. If I do, then, well, who knows what might happen. But uh, I hope you can take something away from this. And uh, <clears throat> the moral of the story is you can change things. You can change your life. Things can get better. If I would have carried on doing what I was doing way back then, then I won't be now sitting there making this video. So, there you go. Have a great day, take care, and um, I hope you enjoyed this video, even though it is a bit somewhat saddish. But um, the thing is, I'm still here. I'm still here. Wee! I'm still here. <laughs> See you later. Bye.